Hello everyone, welcome to the third video of the UCX series. On this video, we're going to focus on the assessment task. As we saw previously, this task comes after the installation. So what does the assessment do? The assessment helps you inventorize all your assets from your different workspaces. These assets include your databases, tables, workflows, jobs, init scripts, external locations, service principles, and much more. This inventory can be used not only by you to plan your migration and prioritize your workloads, but also it is used by UCX as a requirement for, for running the next tasks. So the assessment is essential for UCX to work. You can run UCX using the command line, Databricks Labs UCX Ensure Assessment Run, or using the workflows from the UI. You can also run it automatically during installation. So how does this look in the UI? Well, if we go back to the UI in Databricks, you can go to your UCX workflows and you will be able to see there's the assessment here. You can see uh, it is running for me, but you can click on it to run here and it will run it for you. Once it starts running, you will be able to see something like this. It will start showing the tasks in green once they are completed. Right now, it is running all of these tasks. This task, for example, has already completed while the others are running and others are waiting. Once everything is completed, what you will see is something like my previous run, which is something like this one where everything is green. Now, going back to the dashboards. So once you have this run successfully, your dashboards will be populated. Well, basically it will populate your inventory tables, which are used by your dashboards. So you can go to dashboards and you can see there's some assessment dashboards, and those are the ones we are going to focus on now. The other dashboards, migration and progress, are mainly used during your migration process in order to see what's your progress and what's your status. So the main dashboard has a lot of detailed information about your inventory. So it has, first of all, high level information about different counts, like the number of databases and tables. It has a percentage of UC readiness, which is calculated based on the types of tables that you have, for example, the jobs and clusters. So this is merely in indicative, but you can use it as a guideline. Now, going down on the dashboard, you can see some more high level metrics. For example, for a database summary, you can see here I have three databases and you can see the recommendation of types of upgrades, right? So for example, this database has some known Delta assets. I know it has those because it has a couple of market tables. You can also see this one requires asset replication and that's because there's tables in DBFS root, which will need to be moved outside that storage. And finally, you can see this one requires in-place sync and that's because it's mostly external tables. Similarly, you have this at table level, but generally you will focus at database level. You can have some information about UDFs, which in this case I don't have any, and you also have information about the external locations that are being used. So in this case, I'm only using two different external locations, and you also have the mount points. In this case, a lot of them are default, but I have one mount point that I created. Now, going into the compute summary, you can see your all-purpose clusters and if they are incompatible due to specific reasons. So, for example, this cluster has two incompatibilities. One is that it's using a non-supported DBR version, and it's also using uh, service principle credentials assigned inside the cluster Spark configs. Also, there's the job summary that similarly shows if there's some incompatibilities. These incompatibilities are similar to the ones above. Actually, I'm using the, the clusters from those to run these jobs. Uh, this is similarly a list of incompatible jobs. Uh, in case you had some submit runs from the outside, it, they will show here as well. Then here we can see more code-related incompatibility problems. Uh, so this more or less analyzes the, the code that's being run. and you have an idea, for example, here I'm referencing the file system directly, which might need to be changed to a table in Unity Catalog or a volume or an external location in Unity Catalog, references to mounts. So you can see some specific code that might not be compatible so that you have an idea of what might need to change. Then in case you had dashboards, 
uh, there will be some information here. Now, going into the file system access, you can see in which cases you're accessing file system. Uh, generally, this is if you're accessing DBFS, and you can see that information here, right? So if you're reading or writing from a specific locations in the file system, Finally, there's some lineage information around the tables that are used by the workflows. And which basically legacy tables that are used by the workflows of so tables in Hive Metastore. And well, in this case, if you are using some ACLs uh, that are incompatible, they will show here if you had Delta Live tables as well or global init scripts, which I don't have, and some final warnings. Now, going back to the dashboard list, there's another list. Uh, which is especially only for Azure, which is the UC Access Assessment Azure, which will show your service principles. So you can see I have two service principles. Then apart from that, you can go back to the dashboards and there's two more dashboards to, to see. One of them is the, the interactive one, which will be empty in my case because it requires system tables. Uh, so just to explain what it is, this dashboard grants even more detail into cluster compatibility, specifically re related to isolation mode, if it's isolation, if it's shared, non-isolation shared, and what types of incompatibilities there might be. Uh, but th for this dashboard consumes some system tables, so it requires Unity Catalog enabled, which I have, but it also will require you to enable the system tables for access and compute, which here you can find information of how to do that if you're interested of seeing this information as well. Finally, we have the estimates dashboard. So in this dashboard, you will see the effort required and complexity for the different tasks in the process. So in my case, the Metastore assignment has already been done, so it is empty in this case. But if we go to group migration, you can see that there's one group and the complexity is S because it's just one group. And actually there should be two groups, but this will only list the groups that have a matching group on the account console. Now, if I go to the next part, you will see the complexity of the number of tables and databases. So this complexity is based on how many tables and databases are identified. And then here, this is more based on the types of tables. So once you decide to migrate, depending on the type of migration, there will be estimated number of hours. And you can see the complexity there. And the last table is just a reference of those estimated number of hours, depending on the type of table you want to migrate. And that's it. Thank you very much.